Welcome back to our study of the book of Revelation. This is a study of prophecy, the end times, and Revelation. We are in the book of Revelation right now. Uh, we've been on a brief hiatus uh, during the uh, Christmas season, a very, very busy Christmas season, but we're back uh, with the study of end times and Revelation, and we're in today uh, chapter 6. And I want to encourage you today to grab a Bible and follow along, because we're going to be turning back and forth between the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, uh, as well as Luke chapter 21 but primarily Matthew 24, and then also Revelation chapter 7, I'm sorry, chapter 6. What we had come through last time is we were talking about Revelation chapter 5, and in Revelation chapter 5 is where we see the scroll being presented. Now, the scroll would have had listed on it um, maybe the, the the contract or the covenant uh, between mankind and God. It would could have had on it the judgment that would happen, uh, what would be the consequences of breaking, uh, God's laws and God's commands. And so we don't know exactly what's written on the covenant uh, or what's written on this scroll on this covenant, but we do know that there was um, that there was something written in it that would unleash the wrath of God upon the world. And there were seven seals that were on this scroll. And as every one of the seals is broken, the uh, seal becomes looser and looser until it's finally, the final seal is broken and the scroll is unleashed. It is unloosed. Uh, it's rolled out and the consequences are read. And that is where the, uh, the judgment of God starts to happen. And so in the book of Revelation, we see three kinds of events that are very important. We see the seal events. And with every one of the breaking of those seals, an, an event is unleashed. Then we have following that the trumpets and at the final trumpet at the last trumpet is the gathering of the church that corresponds with what Paul says when he talks about at the last trumpet uh, that's when all of the church will be gathered and we'll look at that as we get into the study of the trumpets section of this and then we get into the final seven uh, parts of this uh, judgment of God and that is the bowl judgments the bowl, the wrath of God that gets finally unleashed and poured out upon the world you picture a bowl being poured out that is the wrath of god being poured out upon the world and we'll get to that as we get to the bowl judgment so we have those three series of seven we have the seven seals that uh are broken and unleash uh, unleash and un, 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 unroll the scroll uh then we have the seven trumpets that are part of god's uh pronouncement figure picture it this way that the trumpets would be kind of like uh the people of israel marching around um around Jericho. Uh, before they took Jericho, they marched around seven days. They blew the trumpet each one of those days. The final day, the seventh day, they marched around seven times. They blew the trumpets and the walls of Jericho fell, fell down. So picture the trumpets in that way, that these are all the warning signs, the warning uh, sounds of God before the final wrath is going to be unleashed. It will be the last time that people can finally get right with God after the final trumpet is blown and the church is gathered and removed, there is no more opportunity for people to get right with God. And so that's what we're seeing as we walk through the book of Revelation. We're seeing all of these events from a heavenly perspective. Now, what I want to do today as we get into Matthew chapter, or I'm sorry, in Revelation chapter 6, is compare that to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, because there's incredible similarities between what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and the seal events that we see in, math, in Revelation chapter 6. And in fact, many of those events are really taking place and we're starting to see those things come to fruition. And it makes you wonder, are we in the midst of the seal events right now taking place because of the things that we're seeing in the world and how those things compare to the book of Revelation chapter 6 and the book of Matthew chapter 24. Now, not everything has happened. Uh, you can make a very good argument that none of the things have happened, but maybe some, some precursors of those things. Uh, maybe these are just... Um, ways that uh, the world is warming up to the events that are that are really found in Revelation Revelation 6 and that's very very possible I'm not one that's ever going to predict dates I I don't think that that's going to be uh something that we can nail down specifically are, are you know are we in seal one or two or three or four are we in any of those seals we don't know uh but you can sure certainly see that the stage is being set that the pump is being primed for those events that are going to take place so today let's turn to revelation chapter six 
So Revelation chapter 6, make sure you have a Bible so we can flip back and forth between Revelation 6 and Revelation 24. Again, I am reading out of what is called the TLV version, that is the Tree of Life version. It's just one of my favorite versions. Uh, it's put out by a group of, uh, of Jewish Christians, Messianic Jews, who believe in, in Jesus as Messiah. And uh, I love the uh, the way that they bring the Hebrew understanding and the Hebrew context into the scripture. So I'm reading out of that simply because it's one of my favorites to read from. And I think it brings a lot of insight and a lot of good discussion. Well, let's pick it up in Revelation chapter uh, 6, verse 1. And we're going to look at seal number 1. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, just continuing on. We had left off in chapter 5 where they were worshiping the Lamb the only one that was worthy to open the scrolls. Now the Lamb of God is going to start opening the scrolls, Jesus himself. It starts off this way. Then I saw, now remember, what is the perspective here? Who's seeing this? And the perspective is being given by John. John is there witnessing the events. Now, I, I don't believe that John was just having a dream or having a vision. It was really that John was transported across time to be able to see these events happen. Now remember, God exists outside of our time and space. And so it's very possible, very plausible, that John was actually supernaturally taken up and experienced the, these events and seeing the real time events that would take place at the end. Now remember also that John is writing this in 90 AD, roughly, approximately 90 AD. John was a first century Christian and John was seeing things and witnessing things that he had never seen before in his life. He couldn't even fathom these things. Think about in our day, if you took somebody out of that day, the day of John, you put them in our day, how foreign this would be. We have we, we have technology, we have buildings, we have automobiles, we have, um, we have airplanes. Uh, you look at the war machine of today, we have tanks and drones and missiles and helicopters and, uh, and jets. And all of these things would have been foreign to John. So when you read through the book of Revelation, remember that John is writing from his perspective, through his eyes, trying to make sense of and describe something that he has never seen before, nor could he even fathom. So when we read this, we have to read it through John's eyes and connect the dots from what John was seeing and trying to describe being a first century Christian compared to what we understand today and what we understand our world to be like today. So a lot of the language in Revelation really reflects that. So in chapter five, we had we had uh, people worshiping the Lamb of God. That the Lamb was the only one worthy to open the scrolls, and now we see here that the Lamb of God is the one opening the scrolls. So John says, "Then I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals." So remember this this idea of these this scroll would be uh, oh that's terrible. I'll have to let me redraw that. Okay, so the idea of John opening these scrolls that you have a scroll that would have been something like this. It would have had two parts to it. And you would have this scroll that would have been sealed together by most likely a string that would have gone around the entire scroll with a wax seal at some point. So you'd have seven of these happen, seven of these strings happen that would all have seals. So the lamb opens one, breaks one of the seals. Now, when that seal is broken, there's all of a sudden a voice like thunder. So you picture the power of that rumbling thunder when you've heard that thunder on in the evenings or during the day when a storm is approaching, that that's the sound of this voice, that the voice like thunder says, and it's saying to John, come, so, so come, look at this. And I came over and I looked. Again, this is why it seems like this is not a vision John is having, but he is there in, in the flesh that he is experiencing this. And when he looked at whatever whatever was being shown to him, uh, he be, it says he beheld or and behold, he saw a white horse. Now, this is the first seal that is being broken. Now, the one who was riding on it had a bow and a crown was given him, and he went out as a conqueror 
so he might conquer. So what is what is this idea of seal number one? Well, seal number one is really the unleashing of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is the antithesis of who Jesus is. It is the anti-Messiah. The anti-Messiah is going out. Now, if, if the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, is bringing people to himself, now we have the antithesis of Messiah, the anti-Messiah, who's not caring about salvation for people coming to God. He's pushing people away from God. And so the ultimate goal is to cause people to move from God. Now, the Antichrist is going about and he has a bow that's a weapon of war. He has a crown. The crown is a picture of authority and kingship. And he is going out not to save, but he is going out to cause a catastrophe. He's going out to conquer. Now, if you go back and watch our previous videos where we've been talking about the book of Daniel, the book of Matthew, you've been looking at what this all is going to look like out of the book of Ezekiel. We know that the Antichrist is going to go against the other kingdoms of the Middle East, and he is going to one by one conquer those kingdoms, and they will bow down to him. In fact, three of them will actually uh, be destroyed, and the rest will start to bow down. That's what the Antichrist will do. So seal number one, we are going to have the Antichrist going out and beginning to conquer. Now, the question becomes, is the Antichrist in place today? we don't know because we haven't seen this event happen. Now the Antichrist could be going out and could be doing things behind the scenes positioning. We know that in the beastly empire that it will be a coalition of 10 kingdoms. 10 nations will come together and they will form what will be the Antichrist's beastly empire. The Antichrist will take over these 10, but they will be in place before he takes them over. So we have not seen a 10 nation coalition, although you are seeing countries which that are really coming against Israel in the Middle East today that are really setting the stage for this happening. The Antichrist will be going out and he will be conquering. So the question is, is this going on now? Is the Antichrist in place today? And the answer to that is, uh, we don't know. We don't know if the Antichrist is working behind the scenes. I tend to think probably so, but we don't know that to be a fact. Well, this is going to correspond with the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Now, what is the first thing that Jesus says? Well, the disciples came to Jesus after he had just taught in the temple of God at the end of Matthew 23. He had just come against the Pharisees, and then he gave some prophetic language. Jesus gave some very prophetic language talking about the temple being destroyed, and you will not see me again until you say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You won't see me again. Well, that event happens when the Lord returns. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord will be what the world is saying or what the Christians are saying when Jesus returns. Now, the disciples came to him and said, well, tell us, Jesus, when is all this going to happen? What is the sign of your return? What is the sign of the end of the age? What is the sign of your return? And, and when are you going to return? How is all this going to happen? Jesus gives them the picture of when all of these events will happen. Now, Matthew chapter 24, uh, really it's uh, starting in, in, in 24 um, verse 5, he says that the first thing you're going to see is this. He says, be careful that no one leads you astray. So the first thing that Jesus warns about in Matthew 24 is deception. Well, what is deception if it is not the Antichrist? If Jesus is truth, the Antichrist is a lie. If Jesus is about salvation, then the Antichrist is about destruction. If the if Jesus is uh, is about uh, grace, the Antichrist will be about condemnation. So everything that is who Jesus is and what Jesus stands for will be the exact opposite.
that that's really the picture of what Satan is, though. Satan is the antithesis of who God is, uh, and that's what what the Antichrist will be. So Jesus says, be careful that no one leads you astray, because this is what the Antichrist will do in his deception, is he will lead people astray. He will lead people from the truth of God into a false truth, a false narrative, a false belief system. Uh, I really believe that, that that world's false belief system will be Islam. It is coming out of a Middle Eastern uh, empire that will be a Muslim empire. Uh, who hates the Jews more than anyone else in the world? And that is the Muslims, that is the uh, Islamists who hate him. He will be what is going to be considered the coming Mahdi of the Islam empire. And so the the Islam empire is looking for their Messiah. Their Messiah is called the Mahdi. The Mahdi will be the Antichrist. We will know the Mahdi is the Antichrist, but the Muslims will know the Mahdi is their Messiah. So that is seal number one. Seal number one. And you see that this, this antithesis, by the way, that you have the Antichrist has a white horse. Well, that's what Jesus has. When Jesus returns, if you look at uh, the book of Revelation, if you look at Revelation chapter 19, it talks about the return of the Lord. And one of the things that happens in the return of the Lord in Revelation 19, verse 11, it says that I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. The one riding on it is called faithful and true. So what we have in the in Revelation 19 is we have a white horse, and this time riding on the white horse is the one who is faithful and true. So we have the faithful and true one riding on the white horse, but in seal number one, we have a white horse who is carrying somebody who is a deceiver, who is filled with deception, who is filled with conquering, where our Savior is filled with saving, not, cow, uh, not conquering. He's full of salvation. And so it's the antithesis of God that is coming out in Revelation 6 in the first seal that is being opened. And this is what Jesus warned about. Be careful that no one leads you astray. Many are going to come, he says in my name, saying I'm the Messiah and will lead many astray. By the way, the coming Mahdi, the coming Messiah, in, the, in Islam belief systems and Islam literature, the coming Messiah, the coming Mahdi, will also have with him what they will be terming as as Christ. They will have they they will he will have a right hand person who will basically call themselves the Messiah, who will call themselves Jesus, who will be by the side of the Mahdi, and they will be saying, I am the Messiah, follow me. And so here you have Jesus saying, Don't be led astray, there will be coming messiahs. Well that is really coming out of this beastly empire, out of this false system of the Antichrist. So Chapter 6, verse 2, the sign number 1, the seal number 1, is really the unleashing of the Antichrist upon the world. Let's go to number 2, seal number 2. What is seal number 2? When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out. This time the horse was fiery red. The one that was on it, that was riding on it, was permitted to take peace from the earth. So that people, this is not, God's not doing this. This is people would slaughter one another. So what are we seeing here? There's no more peace and there is war. And people are in great conflict and there is great chaos that is going to be unleashed upon the earth. So we see seal number one, we seal the Antichrist is on the move. Now, we again, we don't see all of those details, but that could be behind the scenes. That could be coming out of Iran. It could be coming out of Turkey. It could be coming out of another nation. The Antichrist is not somebody that has a lot of power and influence yet, but will. It will be somebody along the lines of Hitler who really was insignificant until he gained power uh, really uh, taking over in that chancellor role of Germany. Uh, before that, he was really insignificant. Well, that's what the Antichrist will be, insignificant and then take power. So this one could be very well behind the scenes. And then you will start to see in the world, you will see a lack of peace. So there's no peace. 
you're going to also see that not only no peace, but you're going to see war, you're going to see conflict, you're going to see chaos. That's what will happen. Now, ask yourself the question, is, is this happening today? Are you starting to see a lack of peace, wars that are being mentioned, and chaos that is occurring? Here's what Jesus said. This corresponds really to the book of Matthew. You look at what Jesus said in Matthew 24, uh, verses uh, 6 and uh, uh, really 6 through 7a, the first part of 7. Here's what he says. Jesus says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed. For this must happen, but it is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So Jesus, what does he predict? He says, there will be wars. There will be rumors of wars. Are, are you hearing any rumors of wars? Uh, China wanting to take over Taiwan. Uh, Iran and North Korea, Korea creating a, an alliance. Uh, Russia wanting to come against Ukraine. Uh, the U.S., I don't know if the U.S. will ever stop, step in and stop any of that. U, the U.S. pulls out of Afghanistan ridiculously. The U.S. pulls out of Afghanistan and leaves conflict and chaos to take hold in Afghanistan with the run and the rule of the Taliban. Uh, so you have wars, you have rumors of wars. Uh, Jesus says there will be, the, there will be nation and the nation will rise up against nation. Now the word nation in the Greek language is the word ethnos, which is where we get our word ethnicity from. So what is that about? That is racial. There will be racial tensions. We are seeing that everywhere. It is not just in the U.S. It is around the world that racial tensions have heated up. And in fact, we have taken so many steps backward uh, because of the uh, leadership in place in the country right now. But we have taken so many steps backward in racial uh, in, in racial uh, harmonies. Uh, and now there's racial divisions that are happening everywhere. So Jesus says there will be wars. There will be rumors of wars. There will be ethnic group rising up against ethnic group. And then he says there will be kingdoms against kingdoms. The word kingdom is the Greek word basileia, and it means the rule or the reign. So that can mean a couple of things. There will be kingdoms, literal places where there's kingdoms that will be going against each other and it could be a rule or reign and this could you could think of it this way that there's a great division of the kingdom of of god the kingdom of light versus the kingdom of darkness and that is rising up everywhere we go there is a darkness that is taking over our world when it comes to everything that we see around us. There's an incredible darkness that is going on. And we see a lot of nefarious things behind the scenes that are going on that is a picture of this. And so what does the second what does the second seal do when the seal is broken? Well it takes peace from the earth. Peace and so that's the most important little phrase to get out of this peace being taken from the earth. So seal number one, the Antichrist is on the move. Seal number two, peace is being taken. Are we seeing any of that? Just again, we may not be seeing it completely. Maybe we are seeing it as a precursor of what is to come. And over the next few years, it's really going to get bad, far worse than it is today, as those seals actually become broken. So when you see the Antichrist on the move, and things are heating up in the Middle East. When you see peace being taken from the earth, you know that the seals have been broken. Okay, let's keep going. What is seal number three? Well, seal number three is a very common one that we are starting to see as well. Let's look at it. Verse five, when the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come. And I behold, and behold, now he sees a different uh, thing. Now he is seeing a black horse that is coming into uh, into focus, that is coming in and being a part of what's going on. He sees a black horse. What is the black horse all about? Well, it says the one riding on it held a balance scale in his hand. So picture 
picture this the picture of a, a courthouse and you will often see a person uh, a, a woman a statue on the courthouse that will be blindfolded who will hold a scale in her hands that's the scale that's the picture of the scale that is being held a scale not only represents in our culture um, the the balances it, the checks and balances the being weighed out but it was also the way of doing business in the day of of John in the day of Jesus you would you would buy something based upon the weight and it would be a scale that would be used then I heard something like a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius but do no harm to the oil and the wine so what what is this all about well this is uh, so we have seal number one that's the Antichrist. We have seal number two, that is no peace. We have seal number three, and what this is, is both famine and hyperinflation. Hyperinflation. Things are costing way more than they should be costing. In this particular case, a quart of wheat. So picture it as a loaf of bread for a denarius now a denarius in that day and i don't remember how much it exactly was but if memory serves a denarius could be a day's wage or it could be several days wage so picture trading a full day or even a full week's work for a loaf of bread now that just takes you back to what happened in nazi germany before uh before world war ii there was hyperinflation that was going on and that hyperinflation was the picture of um uh, of what we see here this that hyperinflation you see pictures of it and you hear stories of it that people would have to take a, an entire wheelbarrow full of full of money to the store in order to buy one loaf of bread and so you see this now by the way i, I bring up germany many times because germany is a micro picture it's a micro picture uh a, a micro uh, image of what the end times would look like so the end times this is a micro picture so picture in nazi germany you had the rise of hitler who was insignificant who rose into power that's a picture of the antichrist you had chaos happening and it became the others the others who's the one responsible for all of our problems who's responsible for all of our uh, chaos who's responsible for our hyperinflation well that's the others in that particular case it was the jews they had no peace they were they were just handing them over neighbors were turning in neighbors then they began to go to war they began to go through and do blitzkriegs around their uh, around germany taking over other countries they were slaughtering each other there was no peace there was chaos there was uh, there was anger in the in the communities in the streets and so they had a scapegoat they had the jews they were experiencing famine and hyperinflation at that time so these are all it's a it's a microcosm of what was what the end times are going to be like and you look today is there famine and hyperinflation today in the united states there is not famine but if you look at other parts of the world you're going to see that there is famine happening everywhere around the world in fact it is one of the biggest problems in the world today the famine that they are they are anticipating that there are many countries around the world that are going to have lots of deaths due to famine because of a lack of food now we have in the united states an abundance um, and uh, so we're not experiencing the famine but we are starting to see the images of inflation now we are seeing inflation on a scale of maybe five to ten to twenty percent so anywhere from five to twenty percent is what we are seeing that's not hyperinflation yet hyperinflation when is when we will start seeing 50 to 500 percent uh of inflation when you start seeing those kind of numbers you're going to be in the picture of hyperinflation so the world is going to experience famine and hyperinflation and that's what's happening here when we have the third seal being broken and we see the black horse that is being unleashed now jesus again says that um, in just a small little little verse he says uh in verse in verse seven 
of Revel of Matthew 24, he says, and there will be famines. Now, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 21, he also says, and kind of clarifies it just a little bit more, in Luke 21, he says that there will be uh, there will be great earthquakes along with famines and epidemics in various places. So we're going to see also he throws in there the, the idea of, he says epidemics, but in the Greek, the word is pandemics. And the pandemics that he says, he uses the term, there's going to be various, or there's going to be, there's going to be many or there's going to be varieties of these. And so I, I really don't think that uh, these pandemics are going to come to an end anytime for the rest of our lives until the, until the Lord returns. We are going to be dealing with some semblance of this or some uh, aspect of pandemics. And they're going to just be new variants and new variants, and then something else could get unleashed. And there's just different things that we're going to be dealing with. We don't even know what the side effects are going to be of all of the vaccines that have been pushed on the world. And that could also create pandemics because in these creation of vaccines, there could be a tearing down of an immune system in other ways that maybe we've already gotten free from. So this could create more turmoil. Now, don't uh, don't take that as, uh, you know, me saying what's going to happen. I'm just saying this is the potential that could happen, that there's going to be various pandemics, there's going to be epidemics, there's going to be famine and hyperinflation. Again, Revelation 6 matches what Jesus said in Matthew 24. So everything that Jesus said there matches what is going on in the seal events of Revelation 6. So let's go on to the fourth seal. What is the fourth seal? So the fourth seal, when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living creature say, come, behold, I saw this time, I saw a pale greenish gray horse. The name of the one riding on it was death and Sheol was following with him. Authority was given to him over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword and by famine and by plague and by the wild beasts of the earth. And so we see in this, this is a picture of death that is beginning to happen. And now we have a fourth of the earth. And so think of how this is going to happen. We've got war, we've got famine, we have plague or another word for plague, pandemics, and we have even animal attacks that are going on. We have wild beasts of the earth. And it doesn't even have to just be wild beasts of the earth. It doesn't have to just be uh, meaning that it has to be animals, but it can be also military campaigns could be considered in that wild beasts of the earth. And so we have this incredible picture of death. So we have seen the rise of an antichrist. We have, we have seen the deception that happens with the rise uh, of the antichrist and all that would uh, correspond uh, with his coming into the world, all of the deception that is going to happen with his coming into the world. We see the fact that there is no peace. We see the fact that there's wars, there's racial tensions, that that's going to happen uh, as a result of the um, of the world. We see famines that are going on, and now we are going to see a tremendous number of death, the death toll that happens upon the world. Now, Jesus, this would correspond to Matthew 24, um, a little bit just out of order with this one and the next one in the book of Matthew, but uh, verses 10, um, to really 10 through 12, it says, and then many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray because lawlessness will multiply. The love of many will grow cold. And so you have death happening with the love of many growing cold. We've already seen the wars, the rumors of wars. And so this, this love growing grows cold uh, is that picture of what happens. And the result of that is that death uh, begins to occur. And so we see this event happening that there is a fourth, one fourth of the population. So 25% of the world's population will die from some of the things that we've seen in the previous two. We see, um, well, really all the, the previous three, because what we're going to see is 
under the Antichrist beastly empire, we're going to see a tremendous amount of death through wars. Um, the fact that there is no peace in the world and you hear of wars and rumors of wars, we're going to see that happen. When you have military conquests and campaigns that are being spoken about uh, openly, when you see the racial tensions that are going on and the chaos that is happening, we're going to see death as a result of that. We're going to see death as a result of the famines. We're going to see death as a result of pandemics. We're going to see a tremendous number of the world's population. If you throw in there the potential of what military conflicts could do when you have uh, the North Koreans and you have Iran developing nuclear weapons, you could see potential there as well. Uh, nuclear weapons being, devast uh, being detonated could devastate parts of the world. And again, those are just all speculations. Don't know how this is going to look or what this is going to be like, but we do know that in this fourth seal that there will be death that will begin to occur. We also see in, uh, in in the next seal, seal number five, that there's going to be martyrdom that is going to happen toward believers in Jesus as all of these other events that are, are, are beginning to occur. When the Lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw this one. I it was there was not a horse. You, you notice how the other ones that there was a horse that you saw in every one of these other events. You saw the the horse, the white horse, the, the Antichrist, who's the anti-Jesus. That you see that horse there in that particular case. You see with the fact that there is uh, no peace. You see a fiery red horse that is riding out. When you see the word, the idea of famine and pestilence. Uh, the idea of famine and pestilence, the or or uh, epidemics. Now you see a black horse, and then when you see death, you see a greenish gray kind of horse. The picture of death. So all of these, these are the the there's horses here. So we have the white horse, we have the the red horse, we have a black horse, and now we have this greenish gray horse. And now though, you get into the next one. And we don't see any horses. There's no horses involved because there's not something riding out to accomplish this. There is. This is the result of what the other horses have brought upon the world is that now you will see under the altar the souls uh, slaughtered for the sake of the word of God. So what is this? The, these are people who have been martyred, the martyrs of faith. These are followers of Jesus who have been killed because of their desire to follow the word of God. They have been killed. They have been, but not just killed. They have been slaughtered for the sake of the word of God. Now, the word of God is Jesus himself. Jesus is the word. Uh, and we have the word that we hold fast to. We have the belief in Christ, the faith uh, which is also represented by the word, but the murders, uh, the martyrs of faith are the ones that really will not will not uh, back out of Jesus. They will not turn their backs on Jesus. They will they they're willing to go to death for the sake of Jesus. They will be persecuted unto death. They were persecuted. They were slaughtered for the sake of the word of God, and they were slaughtered because they had a witness. the The witness was the testimony. They had a testimony and they weren't willing to ever turn their backs on it. And because of that, they were killed as a result. Now, again, the whole thing we've been asking is, are you seeing the evidence? Well, if you look at what's going on in the Middle East, you can see the at least the workings together of a future beastly empire. Are we seeing no peace? Well, yeah. We see we hear of wars and rumors of wars. We hear of racial tensions, but I don't think it's it's gotten as bad as it's going to get. Are we seeing famine and epidemics, pandemics? Yes, but again, I don't think it's as bad as it's going to get. Everything that we have we have been feeling now and experiencing now are really the the Braxton Hicks contractions. If you know what that is, those are the contractions that you have before labor actually starts. And they can happen a month before, you know, labor starts. Women start having the Braxton Hicks contractions. It's the body getting itself ready. We have not entered into the labor pains yet, but the body is getting itself ready. The world is getting itself ready. Are we seeing death? Not to a tremendous extent, but we are seeing it somewhat when you hear the numbers that get reported with the pandemics. But th those are those are minor 
compared to, again, what was this? This was one fourth of the world's population. Uh, the world's population right now is probably around 8 million. And so figure that that's about 2 million. Are we, have we seen 2 million in deaths? No, we haven't seen that. But you will, because of wars, rumors of wars, uh, famine and pestilence, you will start to see that. And then are we seeing attacks against people who follow Jesus? Yes, we are. We are seeing it on in pockets. Uh, you're seeing it in Africa. You're seeing it in some of the Middle Eastern countries. You're seeing it, uh, but you're not seeing it to an extent that we will see it. Um, you're you're seeing the precursors of what will happen. Things that we should be looking at to get ourselves ready for the fight that we are going to be in. Um, these are precursors. They haven't completely. Um, come to full fruition but they are they are it's the picture of what's going to happen so the deaths that are happening in african countries the muslim countries in africa for example those are just the pictures of what's going to happen and they haven't come to that full fulfillment as of yet so these souls that had cried out the witnesses they cried out with a loud voice saying oh sovereign master holy and true how long before you judge those on who dwell on earth and avenge our blood how long before you judge the ones that came against us and took our lives then a white robe was given so these were not on a horse but they were all given a white robe a white robe was given to each one of the martyrs uh, and they were told just I want you to rest for a little uh, for a little while so for a little while I want you to rest uh, just rest a little while longer until the number of your fellow servants was complete so apparently God has a number of how many are going to be martyred we don't know what that number is we don't know how far away we are from that number but there is a number of ones that will be martyred these will be your brothers and sisters who are brothers and sisters in messiah in christ they will be killed as the ones who've already been killed had been killed so he's saying to them look you were martyred for your faith you held on to the word of god you had a witness they're wondering how long will it go until you avenge us here's a robe rest a little bit longer your work is done there are more that will be killed when they have been killed in the same way that you've been killed once that number has been fulfilled then they will finally be avenged so the fifth seal is the martyrs now jesus says that though he says uh, verse 9 of chapter 24 of matthew then they will hand you over to persecution and will be and will kill you and you will be hated by all the nations because of my name so we know that this is going to happen so we know that there will be a great uh, martyrdom that is going to happen against believers in the world now we don't know if there's going to be more happening in the middle east or if this is going to be worldwide uh if where it's all going to happen but we know that there's going to be martyrs killed and most likely it will be every continent on the it, on the world in the plant on the planet that will be killed in some manner because of the faith and the testimony that they have and the fact that they hold tightly to the word of god which is jesus and which is their faith that they have that's seal number five let's go to seal number six and find out about seal number six i saw when the lamb opened the sixth seal that there was a great earthquake the sun became as black as sackcloth made of goat's hair and the full moon became like blood the stars of heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree drops unripe figs when shaken by a great wind the heaven ripped apart like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island was moved from their places then the kings of the earth and the great men of them and the military commanders and the rich and the mighty and everyone slave and free hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains and they tell the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne now who is the one seated on the throne well we have looked at that that is the father that is what who is called the ancient of days 
seated on the throne. That could also be the son as well, who will be the one who will carry out the wrath. Hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. So I, I guess it's not, I, I shouldn't say the son over here because here's the son, the one seated on the throne, the ancient of days and the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. So here's what we see at the end of the sixth seal. The wrath of God has come. So I want you to notice this, that if you compare this to the book of Matthew, you have seals one through five. One through five, in my opinion, take place in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Why do I think that? Because Matthew 24 verses um verses four uh through um uh, through 14 also correspond to the first three and a half years so if you look at the first three and a half years of what's going to go on this is where seals one through five are going to take place and what do you have in seals one through five you have the antichrist being unleashed you have the fact that there's no peace in the world. Um, you have famine and you have pandemics or pestilences will be happening in the world. Uh, not only do you have that, you have death. You have one fourth of the world's population are going to be killed because of famine and pestilences and, and the fact that there's wars and, and there's no peace that is going on. Then you have a great sense of martyrdom that is going to happen with the believers that seals one through five and that corresponds to matthew 24 verses 4 uh, through 14 and those all take place in the first three and a half years then in matthew 24 you have in verse 15 of matthew 24 you have what is called the abomination of desolation event this abomination of desolation according to the book of Daniel as well, happens at the three and a half year mark. Because then the final three and a half years are called, are called Jacob's trouble. And they are, the, they are the time of the great tribulation. Jesus, in fact, says this is the tribulation, the great one. Now, at the end of those three and a half years is where you seal, see seals number number six and seven and why do i say that because look at what this seal was the the sixth seal was this great earthquake well when did that happen when did the sun become black as sackcloth and the moon the full moon like blood the stars of heaven falling the earth uh to the earth like a fig tree that drops unripe figs uh the heaven ripped apart the scroll rolled up the mountain and the island moved from their places the kings of the earth and the great men are scared because they know that we are now at the great day of the wrath well how do we know well jesus says in Matthew 25, so, so look at this, Matthew 25 verses, um, verses 29, or just verse 29, and actually you can put in 30 as well, but here's what it says. Jesus says, immediately, he says, but immediately after the trouble of those days. Now, what is the trouble of those days? That's Jacob's trouble. That is this event that is described between Matthew 24 verses 15 uh, through 29. He describes these three and a half years and what's going to go on in those three and a half years. He describes those three and a half years in that section. And it says at the end, but immediately, after the trouble of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So, if you look at this, you have seals one through five that are happening. These are all the lead up times. Seals one through five are the lead up times to the this, this abomination of desolation event that kicks off the great tribulation, which is the final three and a half years, 
also known in the Old Testament as Jacob's trouble, that's all kicked off in Matthew 24, 15. At the end of Matthew 24, 15, in verse 29, 29 matches completely seal number six that happens at the end of all of the days of Jacob's trouble. So seals six and seven happen right here at the end of, of the events as the wrath of God. Now, from this time, it seems like now things are going to be fast-tracked. From this point in time, things are going to take off. So we have seal number six happening, and then seven. seal number seven is going to unleash the trumpets. And once that happens, the trumpets and the wrath itself is very rapid, very quick. But this seals, the seal process, seals one through five, are most likely going to take place over a three and a half year period. And then you have seals at six and seven that happen at the end of the seven years of tribulation. So these can take this seals one through seven can take a, you know, could be the entire seven year process, but then you have the trumpets and you have the wrath of God that happen in very quick order in very rapid uh, succession. Uh, from this point on. So this is, the seal number six matches exactly what Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 29. Uh, and so those are the events that happen. Those are the first six seals. The first four, the horses that are unleashed. Then you have the martyrs that are there. And then you have the end. We have come to the conclusion of the seals. And now, now God's wrath is going to come. Now, how is he going to announce his wrath? There's going to be a series of trumpets like the wrath that will be poured out on Jericho. There was marching around for seven days and the trumpets were blown. The same way, the seven trumpets are blown. It's the warning sign that is given before the wrath is finally unleashed. Now, if you look at the end of those seven trumpets, that's where you see the the church being uh, being taken out. And so that's why I believe really strongly in a in a in a post tribulation or a pre wrath rapture rather than a pre tribulation rapture because this is going to be the first time that we see the church being uh, moved and removed and again it corresponds with what Jesus said in Matthew 24 it corresponds with what Paul says when he says at the last trumpet you will be um, you know you will be taken you'll be gathered so it seems like all of those events happen that we need to prepare ourselves for the fact that we're going to go through at least the seals and the first six trumpets before we are actually taken out, but we will be taken out before the wrath of God, because the wrath of God will not be poured out upon his loved ones. It will be poured out upon the world. The seals and the trumpets are not the wrath. The wrath are the final bowl judgments that are given. Well, one final seal, and let's look at the final one, and we'll wrap it up here for today. Actually, I take that back. We're going to get into the next seal next time. In fact, we're going to get into Revelation chapter 7. And let me give you a little bit of a word of warning. The next seal actually is at the beginning of Revelation chapter 8. So we don't unleash the final seal that really unleashes the trumpets until Revelation chapter 8 verse 1. In Revelation chapter 7, and I would encourage you to go through and read that, that there is the ones that are marked. This is kind of a, chapter 7 is kind of a footnote to all of the events that are happening in 6 and in 8 and then beyond. So chapter 7, we're going to look at this group of people that have been sealed, this group of ones that have been sealed that are God's servants who, um, who have been set aside. Now we're going to look at that next time. We'll look at chapter 7 and then we'll get into seal number 7 in the following week in chapter 8. And then from that point, we will start looking at the trumpets because the breaking of chapter 7 will unleash the scroll, and now the trumpets are being sounded as the final warning to the wrath of God that is going to come, and we can know exactly what those are. So, again, be watching world news, be watching world, uh, be watching things that are taking place in the Middle East, watch to see if those signs, one, the Antichrist being unleashed, which is chaos that begins to happen in the Middle East. Now, we may not see the, the Antichrist there, but that doesn't mean he's not working behind the scenes already 
doing his his um, his work to prepare. So the Antichrist could be unleashed, could be on the scene, could be working behind the scenes yet today. We're going to see no peace in the world. Wars, rumors of wars, racial tensions, kingdoms of light versus kingdoms of darkness. We're going to see that beginning to happen. And we do see some of that beginning to happen. You're going to start seeing famines and hyperinflation. That will begin to happen. All that they talk about with the Great Reset, this idea of a Great Reset. By the way, it's never mentioned in the Bible of a one world economy. We talk about that, but there's not mention of that. But this idea of hyperinflation could lead to a Great Reset reset. It could very well lead to a one world economy, uh, but I highly doubt that. I don't think that that's going to happen. Those are just uh, spec. I don't actually know where that that, that um, idea originated from, but it's not biblical. Uh, it's just what's going to happen is this idea of a beastly empire that that will happen. And we're also going to see uh, that there will be hyperinflation and famine. That's, that is definitely going to happen. We're going to see death. A quarter of the world's population is going to be killed because of famine, wars, earthquakes, natural disasters, and pandemics that are happening upon the world. More and more Christians are going to be persecuted. And then we are going to see the end, the finale, as all of that uh, comes together. So stay in touch. Stay in tune with this Bible study. I'm excited after this Bible study, I'm going to start putting together a weekly uh, news program where I'm going to uh, share the events of the world through the biblical filter to see the end times news report, to look at where are these events and what is going on that we need to prepare ourselves for the things that are coming our way. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you for spending this time with me, and I look forward to joining you again next week as we get into Revelation 7. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May God be with you, protecting you, and blessing you every step of the way. See you next time.